This is what it's really like to visit Cappadocia. I've been to around 60 countries now, but I've seen nothing like Cappadocia. This place is really small. This place is unreal. It's the highest castle in all Cappadocia. And it is so freaking windy up here. In fact, they've canceled the hot air balloon for the fifth day in a row here. My trip to Cappadocia was more enjoyable than I'd honestly thought it could have been. And while hot air balloons and pink vintage cars might be what a lot of people associate with this place, I found out that there's a whole lot more there. But as I arrived as a first time visitor, I had so many questions that really could only be answered by being there. First off, I wanted to know what I could experience without relying too much on transport. And would I really be able to manage with a small budget of around 50 euros a day despite tourist prices and inflation? Well, during my visit, I was pretty surprised by what I found here and how much it cost me, or should I say didn't cost me. So whether or not you're a fan of hot air balloons and pink cars, let me show you the Cappadocia I found this past spring. I think you're gonna like it. Now, for most of my time in Cappadocia, I stayed at a place called Kayatash Cave Suites. Although Kayatash Cave Suites does technically have the word cave in its name, they also have rooms that aren't in a cave. And as it turned out, I ended up staying at a room that wasn't in a cave. But don't worry, there will be some caves in this video. Plus, the room cost about $40 a night, which was pretty reasonable for Cappadocia, especially considering that breaks down to $20 per person since I was traveling with my wife. Anyway, there are many of these cave hotels around Cappadocia, and they can be a pretty unique place to stay. Now Cappadocia is a great place to hike, and I made sure that I fit some hikes into my itinerary. And since there were tons of easy to reach hikes near where I was staying in Goreme, I thought I'd stick to something nearby for my first hike. Plus Cappadocia is known for a certain shape of rock formation, which I'd find plenty of on this hike. Even though the valley where the hike is is locally known as Rocket Valley, it looks very similar to another nearby valley known as Love Valley. Do those remind you of something? Well, regardless of whether these structures look phallic to you or not, there's something very humbling about walking around here. My only regret is that I visited in late afternoon and it's really better visited during the morning when the sunshine will be right on those rock formations. Sorry, I did a hawk to climb. <laughs> Looks like it. Yeah. But just up the path from Rocket Valley, there's this really popular spot locally known as Ashiklar Tepesi. <laughs> Damn. While I'd only seen like two or three other visitors on my hike till then, once I got up to Ashiklar Tepesi, it felt like I was in a different world. There were a whole lot of people around, but the views were also pretty jaw-dropping. But it has been storming and snowing off and on all day, and I can see there's a storm in the distance that's kind of coming towards me, so I think my time up here is going to be kind of limited. And one thing that I had asked around about and searched on Google Maps for is if there's an easy way to get here from Goreme. But unfortunately I got kind of bad advice and people just tried to sell me a tour and didn't tell me that there's a street that leads up here and it's only like a 15 minute walk. And I'm not saying everyone here is going to mislead you, but don't even bother asking because it's right there and you can walk right up it. And even though this spot is definitely not off the beaten track, it's a nice place to enjoy the views while the call to prayer is going on. But I wanted to familiarize myself with the local cuisine here in Cappadocia. So upon recommendation, I headed over to Gorime restaurant. It's a traditional restaurant that's right off the main street that runs through the town. I wouldn't say it was the most budget friendly option in town, but they clearly had a focus on quality and I was able to try a few different local specialties for about $20. And amazingly, the bread is free here too. First off, I tried some manti. They're really popular in Cappadocia and they're basically like a Turkish ravioli. And they're quite garlicky. They come with some yogurt and kind of butter sauce served on top. They're a little bit spicy too and there's a little bit of tomato in there. And the manti were really good, but there was one particular dish that I really wanted to try while I was here in Cappadocia. While there are dozens or even hundreds of kinds of kebab that are popular around the country of Turkey, Cappadocia is home to a special kind of kebab that's cooked in pottery. It's like it's mutton. Soft meat, salty, good. Comes with some salad. And it comes with this nice kind of spiced barley, which is one of my personal favorites. And Iron is the drink of choice. And to finish off the meal, I had a Turkish coffee. But in addition to traditional Turkish coffee, while heading out on another hike, I found some really good regular coffee too. Plus they even had donuts. Uh, the yellow one there? It's dark chocolate, yeah? Oh. Ah, that's, that's what I was. There are a lot of nice little local establishments here in Cappadocia and for 89 lira I was able to get a coffee and a donut so 
and the place is called The Goat, or The Greatest of All Time. And while it might not have a particularly original or local name, it was a pretty good spot to stop at. But after coffee and a donut, I was ready for the day's hike. Right now I'm over here at Rose Valley and there's a lot of those four wheelers driving by. They're kind of loud to be honest, and they're not really my cup of tea, but they are here if you're interested. But once you get past the four wheelers, there are some amazing views down into the valley. This is what it's really like to visit Cappadocia. But there's not just a nice view here at Rose Valley. There's also a pretty epic hike that takes you through the valley. And I'm now going down to walk in the valley, but it's a pretty steep hike down. Slide down on the butt. <laughs> And down in the valley, horse riding is also a popular activity. But as my hike continues, it quickly starts to feel a lot more isolated from the world. This place is unreal. But during the spring, there can be a lot of snow and rain, and it does get quite muddy here. But don't let that put you off. All you need is a decent pair of boots to hike around in. But it really is quite, quite muddy here. And just right along the path, I came across an area with many different cave dwellings. I haven't actually seen anyone, just a pigeon, but it does look like these dwellings might be inhabited. But then again, it's really cold right now and there's obviously no heating here. So if I had to guess, they might be inhabited when it gets closer to summer. And there are plenty of grapevines around and it looks like people do farming here too. Echo. And so far here, after a few days in Cappadocia, I have to say the most rewarding thing I've done is hiking through this ravine. Or I guess it's better referred to as a valley. But regardless, this place is not on the tourist track at all, and the feeling of walking along this path next to hundreds of rock formations and under natural arches is just pristine. So for anyone really wanting to experience Cappadocia, I feel like this hike is a must. And man, coming here in spring is just really nice. These smell so great. Oh my god. Is that a slide? Splinter slide. I may not have been gifted with blue skies and hot weather today, but I didn't come here to lay on a beach either. But after a few hours hiking, I was pretty hungry. And the nearest town was a place known as Ortehisar. There were some really great views from the road walking into the town. But since I hadn't planned to come here, I was really wondering what I'd find. Would it just be a quick stop or would I find a reason to stay a little longer? Well, one thing was for sure. I was really hungry after that hike. And when I saw a place specializing in kebab and Turkish pizza, I went right in. The family running the place was really welcoming and was happy to show us a little bit of how they prepare their food. I started my meal with this Turkish watermelon soda I'd never tried and it was really good. And the restaurant serves super flavorful vegetables in their salad. You can't find that everywhere. And for the main courses, we went kebab all the way. And let me tell you, that's a lot of meat they'll serve you over there. And I really should have stopped there, but I saw they had some interesting desserts on their menu, so I ordered two of them. But having had a very good meal, it was time to go check out the town while there was still some daylight left. Ortehisar's got his own giant castle, yet nobody seems to be over here. And it's just a pretty scenic place, especially when it's snowing out. Unfortunately, I came just a little too late to go inside the castle today. It closes at 6 p.m. and that's exactly the time it is now. But certainly on another trip, I'll make a point of coming back here because this place is pretty cool. Plus, there's great views over here in Ortehisar and I had a pretty good meal too. I definitely recommend checking out this town. But this weather has really taken a turn for the worse. Well, it's actually not bad. It's nice in the snow, but it's really cold out. So I'm going to grab a taxi and head back to Goremi. Thanks. Kaya Tasha, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. The bus station is fine too. Oh, Easy. Okay, no, no problem. So I've never taken a taxi in Turkey and I couldn't find any in an app. So I just asked the taxi driver at the stand and then they put us in this one. But it seems that with taxis, they actually prefer not to negotiate and they just put the meter on. So that's kind of nice. And after a lot of snowy and gray weather, it was also kind of cozy, the sun came out. But in addition to the budget-friendly cave hotel that I spent most of my time at, I did spend a night at a much more luxurious hotel on my last night in Cappadocia. And though I'm not one to always go straight for the luxury option, this particular hotel provided a whole lot more than just a comfortable stay. Now there is a really extensive network of underground tunnels that go all around Cappadocia. But I wasn't that eager to have to visit the expensive and often overcrowded designated tourist sites to see them. So I actually had decided just not to visit them on this trip. But when I found out that the hotel actually owned a part of these tunnels and then I could visit them for free as a guest, I was pretty happy. But these tunnels were really just one of many historic places located within the hotel grounds. So let's take a walk around and see what I found there. A member of the hotel staff was nice enough to show me and a few other guests around. Come this way, please. Good night, good night, good night. 
ve Doktor Gökçen Ilıcalı ve Almanya'nın Fowler. Kendi Kabadokyan, and he was expected in Kuwait, and he wanted to have an investment. At first there were just 15 rooms, but right now we have 57 different rooms and 7 different mansions. For the next year we will have 71 different rooms and with a big spa. In addition to being located at the site of an old convent, there's a 2,000-year-old Bizirhane on site. Basically, it's a type of courtyard area that's unique to Cappadocia and generally features the chapel since it was used by Cappadocian Christians. And basically, every outside area of the hotel has crazy views. Plus, the hotel has a massive wine cellar, which the guide said is the largest in Cappadocia. But in Rio, <laughs> the tunnel is 5 kilometers under... Uh, uh. Yeah, underground, on the well, Cappadocia. Uh -huh. All of them are connected to each other, and all of them are connected to an uh, underground city in Derinkuya and Kaimatlı. Ah, it's all connected? Yeah. That's so, wow, that's far away. It's like 60 kilometers yes, or something. Exactly. Oh. Yes, exactly. Underground, yeah. in all of Cappadocia, there are too many tunnels that Sorry. all of them are connected to each other. Uh -huh. and, uh, there are uh, many cities, underground cities. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, um, some of them are, are actually unknown mm -hmm. ah. yeah but can you go from one city to another um no. some of them are closed you know? okay. yeah that's why we, are, we can't just um go through it through all of them ah. we are going to just visit the short part mm -hmm. inside of the photo okay how do you feel about the tunnel great i'm excited get you ah it's small. Oh yeah. Ah. <laughs> now I'm scared. <laughs> okay. Okay. And even though I only spent maybe like 10 minutes walking through that tunnel, it's pretty tight. This place is really small. If you're not a fan of tight spaces, definitely don't go here. It goes for five kilometers further. But I won't be going that way. Oh, I can breathe again. <laughs> At this point, I would like to show you Ichisar Castle. It's the highest castle in all Cappadocia. And I actually went there on my own, so let's see what it's like to visit Cappadocia's tallest castle. Hi, uh, it will be two uh, entrance tickets. Uh, how much for two? 251 per 500. 500 is too okay. If you have 100, that'd be great, things. Most people don't know, but the main thing that you want to visit when you visit Uchisar Castle is this ping pong table. Not really. I'm now inside one of the mini caves in this castle. There wasn't really any information available in English at the entrance, so I'm interested to see what I can actually learn here versus what I have to guess. But I can tell you for sure that this castle is many centuries old, and there should be some pretty cool views up top. And behind me, you can see Goreme over there, beyond that, the Red Valley. And then over to the right, you see Ortehisar, where there's also another castle that I was just a little bit too late to climb up. And the Cappadocian landscape throughout is just like, wow. But I'm not even all the way up yet, so let's keep climbing. And I mean, I could tell you that there's 467 stairs to get to the top, but I'd just be making that up, and who cares anyway? But climbing up this historic castle really gives you a one-of-a-kind feeling as you combine taking a views of the landscape and looking at the castle itself. And it is so freaking windy up here. In fact, they've canceled the hot air balloon for the fifth day in a row here. Plus, even though some people might call a hot air balloon ride quintessential here, they can easily cost you a few hundred dollars. So this castle is a good alternative if you just want to get in some of the views. Plus, off to the west, you've got views as far as you can see too. But today is a super windy day and the wind does happen to be coming from the west, so I'm going to go get some rock cover now. This is what rock cover looks like. And coincidentally, the call to prayer started right then. Regardless of if you follow any specific religion or you don't have a religion at all, the call to prayer in Turkey is a serene experience and I challenge you to stop everything you're doing at least once for one minute and just enjoy it. And having visited Uchisar Castle, I headed back down to my hotel just to enjoy a few more hours of luxury before I headed off to my next destination. So considering I was able to see so much just by staying at this hotel, it was really worth paying a premium for. And breaking the price down for what I got, it was really a very good deal. But I went over my hotel experience in depth in another video comparing this luxury hotel to my cave hotel experience. So definitely watch that one next. 
And if you like this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for many more travel videos. Thank you so much for watching.